once again, Michael Watley, the chairman of the RNC, is here. Sir, great to have you back with us on the program. It's good to be on with you, Vince. Isn't it wild? So, uh, you know, we've gone from uh, a little bit of idle speculation to full-blown chaos on the left right now about who's going to be their nominee. Boy, am I glad that my uh, my quote aged well. Um, but, uh, you know, the, the, the timing on this thing uh, could not be worse for the Democrats. You know, and they really have a no-win situation because they're either going to have Joe Biden as wounded as the candidate is going into a general election, as we have ever seen, or they're going to try and have a replacement at their convention. Kamala Harris is actually polling substantially worse against Donald Trump than Joe Biden is. And uh, I don't see how they can come across that convention without anybody other than Kamala Harris, without having, you know, a a major floor fight uh, in Chicago. There was um, I, I saw, I think, a CNN survey uh, earlier this week that indicated that registered voters thought of Kamala Harris more highly than Joe Biden. Uh, when you look at these numbers, what are you relying on? Are you looking at swing state polling? What what tells you the Kamala Harris story? Well, look, I think the, the, the national polls that we've seen that show her seven points behind Donald Trump, they show Joe Biden about four points behind Donald Trump. And when we look at the battleground state polls right now, they continue to show that Donald Trump has significant leads against all comers. You know, the thing that that we see right now is it doesn't matter who's on the top of the ticket, they're going to adopt Joe Biden's disastrous policies. And the American people do not want four years of an open Southern border, a weak economy, and really a weak America on the world stage. Yeah, it it is uh, wild. You know, uh, Joe Biden is in Wisconsin today. He's uh, traveling to Wisconsin. That's an essential swing state. And we got some news uh, earlier today that the Wisconsin Supreme Court has once again, uh, now led by lefties, has once again okayed drop boxes all across the state. Um, I know that you've been fighting for election integrity to make sure that pe- we have credible, free and fair elections. What's your reaction to the decision in Wisconsin to put drop boxes everywhere again? A very, very disappointing statement. I mean, really, truly by that liberal court uh, to try and and open up discord into the election cycles. I think anybody who wants to add elements into uh, the election that are going to cause chaos uh, is doing it for a partisan reason. So very, very disappointing to say yeah, all right. We'll keep, and I imagine the uh, that the right will keep mounting challenges to the extent that's possible in places like Wisconsin. Absolutely. Look, at the end of the day, we want the same types of protections all across the country. We want to make sure that only American citizens are voting. We want to make sure that you use a voter ID. We want the states to clean up the voter rolls. And in states that are going to have uh, mail-in balloting, we want those protections in place. And so we think that uh, this decision by the Supreme Court, again, it's a, it's a partisan decision uh, that is designed to introduce chaos into the election cycle. And we're very disappointed. We are going to keep fighting. Um, I'm back on the issue of whether or not Joe Biden continues to be the nominee uh, for the Democrats. Uh, there was some uh, look what looked like leaked video of President Trump speaking candidly about the state of the race earlier this week. He indicated that Biden's done for. He thinks Kamala Harris is likely to become uh, their nominee. Um, and uh, right now, as we speak, President Biden is undergoing uh, a series of public tests to try and prove that he's actually mentally with it. He's doing some sort of big sit-down interview tonight with George Stephanopoulos on ABC. What do you think of this effort that the White House is undertaking to try and rejuvenate what's left of Biden's image? You know, they they probably would be better off to go back to the basement with their campaign because every single time he is out there and they keep trotting him out more and more and more, he keeps coming up with more and more gas um, and, and they're running him into the ground even more than he already is. So, you know, but it really does go back to the fact it's not just what he said or how he says it. It's what he says, you know, and and we have uh, an American public who is deeply distrustful right now of the Democratic brand, this progressive liberal uh, brand that the president is championing. And every single other candidate that they could put forward is going to adopt the same failed policies that he has put forward with it. But when you think about where the president stands, Joe Biden, uh, right now, uh, every single time that he's talking to the press, he's just digging a deeper hole. How devastating is it for a political campaign to lose so many high-dollar donors? We're watching 
Uh, a lot of big dollar donors saying they're out. They don't want Biden anymore. They can't support him. Reed Hastings is the is the billionaire co-founder of Netflix, uh, told The New York Times this week, quote, Biden needs to step aside to allow a vigorous Democratic leader to beat Trump and keep us safe and prosperous. Uh, there's your these donors, if as they walk away from a political campaign, is is that a big deal? It's a very big deal. At the end of the day, this entire campaign is going to come down to a question of strength versus weakness. And what we're seeing in Joe Biden is weakness across every front at this point. And so when you see the lack of enthusiasm at his events, when you see the lack of support from people in his party, and you see that donors are walking away from him, those are all signs that everybody recognizes the inherent weakness in this campaign. The flip side is Donald Trump absolutely hit every mark at that debate, delivered a very forceful, articulate vision for the future of America with him back at the White House. Our donors are absolutely coming on board every day. We have significant uh, amount of money that we raised. We outraised them uh, substantially over the course of the second quarter. And every single rally, no matter where we go, uh, we're getting five, six, eight, ten thousand 10,000 people who are showing up. Yeah. In the Bronx, we had 25,000. And in uh, New Jersey, of all places, we had 107,000 people show up. So, yeah, we feel really good about the excitement and enthusiasm in this race compared to where Joe Biden and the Democrats are. Um, the uh, President Trump has uh, really kind of sat on the sidelines this past week uh, insofar as, you know, making his voice heard in, in this crazy news cycle, uh, because it it seems pretty obvious from the outside that it, this is a uh, concerted strategy by President Trump and his campaign to essentially let Joe Biden burn. I mean, people are watching it happen. They don't need outside commentary to see uh, that that Joe Biden is in chaos uh, as a result of the state of his health and certainly the cover up that's been going on around him uh, by these Democrats. Um, you know, how how considered is a strategy like this where President Trump sits back and says, all right, I'm going to let it burn. I don't need to say anything. Well, I think that's what you do, right? When your opponent is in the middle of a meltdown, you just let them melt down. Uh, why in the world would you try and insert yourself into that press cycle uh, right now? Because all we want to do is make sure that the American people see this contrast between the strength of Donald Trump and the weakness of Joe Biden. And there is nothing that has drawn that contrast in, in, a, in a more profound way than that debate and all of the follow-up since. Yeah. You, you mentioned uh, at the outset, Michael Watley, that the polling is very favorable to President Trump, no matter who he's up against. Uh, and so the numbers are, are definitely heading in the direction of, uh, of decency. They're heading in Trump's direction and the direction of the Republican Party. Um, what do you do as an RNC to try and manage expectations, though? Because the last thing you want is for people to become overconfident about what's going to happen in this election. Could not agree more. You know, we're going into our convention. Uh, we're going up to Milwaukee to, to kick it off on the 15th. I'll be actually going up there on Sunday to get ready uh, for, you know, a week of preparation. And I'm telling everybody, roll up your sleeves, enjoy the July 4th holiday, and get ready to work because there's no such thing as a red wave. We know that this is going to come down to seven, eight, ten states, including Virginia, uh, where we're going to have battleground status and we're, we're winning by, you know, five, six points in states like Nevada and Arizona, North Carolina and Georgia. But we're within a point one way or the other in Michigan and Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, uh, Virginia, New Hampshire and Minnesota. So this thing is not done at all. And we absolutely need to continue to draw this contrast out and put Donald Trump's vision for America where he is going to restore the southern border. He is going to restore our economy and he's going to restore our standing in the world and make sure every voter knows that that's what's at stake in this election. And then when it comes to those voters, the last thing for you, uh, Michael Wally, you and I have talked before about what it's going to take to get their ballots in, because that really is the game. You get those ballots, you got to get them in. Every state has different rules. Some elections are starting very early as a result of the efforts by the left. Uh, can you give us a sense of, of where you are today as a Republican National Committee, where the party is broadly? Uh, and um, what that ballot collection effort looks like right now. Yeah, we are very committed, uh, as is Donald Trump, uh, to make sure that every voter has a plan. It is great if you want to vote early. It's great if you want to vote by mail. It's great if you want to vote in person. The key is you have to make a plan and you have to execute that plan and deliver that vote. So we are building out our grassroots effort right now. It's a huge, huge effort, our victory program. 
all across the country. Uh, we're calling it Trump Force 47 uh, this cycle around. We've got websites that are going up. We are recruiting volunteers by the thousands, uh, and we're getting ready to uh, deploy them coming out of the uh, out of the convention. So we're excited, and uh, what we're seeing on the ground right now, that enthusiasm is going to translate into the grassroots efforts we need to get these votes in. All right, Michael Watley, chairman of the Republican National Committee. Sir, thank you as always for your time. Really appreciate you joining us today. Uh, I hope you had a very happy Independence Day. And have, please have a great weekend, sir. Absolutely. You too. And Vince, really appreciate you and your listeners.